and welcome back to part two of the uh, build of the Airfix Supermarine Spitfire Mark 1A. On this part we're going to tackle actual painting of the uh, model. I could have used an airbrush at this point but I thought uh, I'd probably use what the typical he would have in his bedroom building these models at home and what I had when I was a young bloke and that is obviously the paint and a ham paintbrush. So I thought we'd give it a go by actually hand painting on the paint. As you can see by the way the paint is going on at the moment, it actually needs a bit more thinning. It's a little bit thick. I did thin it but uh, clearly not enough. So we'll just finish off this wing, spread it out nice and even so it doesn't sort of, uh, appear to be too thick or buggy. Then I might thin it out and we'll attack all the rest of the fuselage. Okay, so thin it out a little bit more and it seems to be going on the rest of the wing and fuselage a little bit more better now, a lot more even, a uh, lot less patchy. So I think I found the actual right mix. So I'll just continue with the, uh, continue with the actual base coat first. I'm going to complete the whole model with the, uh, the green colour. Then from there I'll uh, layer on top uh, the brown camouflage colour. This should stop hopefully some of the hard lines between the two, uh, two, two colours. Okay, given the base coat sufficient time to dry and now we're going to look at putting the actual uh, camouflage uh, colour on top of this, the brown colour. So looking at the back of the box gives you the basic pattern of how that camouflage should look. You can get masks that actually uh, get accurately uh, get the camouflage pattern on but I'm just going to roughly eyeball it and uh, use a pencil to actually draw on the camouflage pattern. Taking care not to press too hard because you don't want an actual thick line there a pencil, just a nice uh, light pencil drawing of the actual camouflage line. And I'll use this as a reference when I'm hand painting on the, uh, the brown camouflage colour. Okay, so now just putting on a light coat of a very much thinned uh, browner colour for the camouflage pattern. Again, just following the pencil lines, just uh, Easily painting it in, try not to get too much of a harsh line between the two colours. Um, as it is a very thin coat. So later on I'll come back with a second coat, see how that fits. Uh, if required, I'll probably put on a third coat if it's required. Uh, but this day is just the, the first light thin coat of, uh, of the brown paint. Okay, so I added the second coat, so you required uh, two coats of the brown to make a nice finish. And uh, now I'm trying to move on to the underside. So moving the underneath the aircraft, I'm differing a bit from the actual um, guide on the back of the uh, modelling box. i done a bit of research and the consensus of opinion seems to be that the, uh, the base or the underneath the aircraft was just black and white. There was no silver or aluminium. No. Uh, parts to it, so that's what I've decided to go with on this occasion. We're just starting off with painting, painting the uh, the white side with a thin down white colour, uh, just getting a nice even coat, and we'll follow up with a, uh, a second colour after this. Okay, marking off the uh, the halfway point with masking tape, just to get that nice straight edge for the black colour when I put it on. Uh, unfortunately, when I went to record the black colour, for some reason the camera didn't work too well. So therefore I don't actually have a copy of the application of the black um, side for the underneath the aircraft. But as uh, you'll see in the later parts of this video, it on, went on quite well. So on the base coats are now done, I'm just going to actually give it a quick coat of uh, gloss clear coat. This will assist in actually putting on the uh, the decals, help it slide a bit smoother and help the decals actually sit better on the actual aircraft itself. So just probably one or two coats of the Tamiya clear coat thinned down for the, uh, for the airbrush and uh, once that's done and dried we'll start putting the decals on. And keeping the theme of this video nice and simple, so for the actual application of the decals, we're just going to keep it simple. Just a small uh, a jar of nice lukewarm water, um, some tweezers, and some cotton buds. So just a good soak in the, uh, the lukewarm water again until the decal becomes slippery on the actual backing mat. Then just sliding it off onto the model itself. You can actually put a bit of water on the uh, the model itself before you put the decal on. This will assist in just moving it around and getting it positioned correctly. 
So uh, once there, just a little bit of moving just to make sure it's in the right spot. We're then using the cotton bud just to push out any of the excess water and soak it up. Then um, we'll use the actual cotton bud just to firm down the decal and help, uh, help it settle properly in the actual um, panel lines of the actual wing itself. Uh, so just a quick rub off there, just to get the excess water off and make it sit properly. As I mentioned before, I actually didn't capture the painting of the black underside of the aircraft, but you can see here, it seemed to go on well uh, after the painting. You can see a nice um, delineation mark between the white and black, nice straight edge. So obviously it went on quite well. We're just finishing up with the decals, again just positioning correctly. Um, once that's done, just a cotton bud to actually soak up the remaining water and uh, firm it into the actual panel lines of the wing itself. Of all the decals putting on, the U seemed to present the most dramas, and uh, no matter what I did to it, it seemed to want to move in all sorts of strange spots. It just took a little bit of patience, um, had to put a bit of water back on every now and then just to help it move a little bit more freer. By the time I actually got it in the right location on the fuselage, and it uh, set quite well. All the decals are now on, um, just letting it dry off a little bit before we start. Um, Looking at putting the landing gear on. Uh, you can see all went on quite well. There was one little um, straight line decal there that went on the wrong way around, but uh, hopefully you won't notice that. Now moving on to the actual landing gear. So I mentioned before I initially wanted to have it landing gear up, but changed my mind, took out the blanks, and now putting in the actual um, proper landing gear, gear down. We just came from the sprues again, just cutting a little bit of the sprue off with the parts so we're not uh, taking any of the part off when we do the cut. Um, once we get those off, we'll do the initial assembly of the landing gear before we put them on the actual uh, aircraft itself. So the model kit itself, it actually has a flat spot on the actual tyres itself, so it sits nice and flush to the ground, just gives that better appearance to the model. It's just a question of a bit of trial and error when you first do these models to work out how to, uh, to rotate that actual tyre so those flat spots fit flush with the ground. Um, but uh, once you do pull it off, it does look quite well. So just fitting the uh, the tyre, uh, sorry, the landing gear to the actual model itself. Um, Initially I did have those blanks in there for the wheels up uh, or in configuration, uh, had to pull them out and uh, are now putting in the actual uh, gear down uh, parts to the aircraft, making sure they slot inside the actual um, fixing holes for the actual landing gear. So once you have mine, just let them sit for a day or so so their glue has well and truly dried on the actual landing gear before you put uh, the weight of the model on them. In this case, I've just set up about four uh, paint cans underneath the fuselage and wing just to uh, keep it nice and level and uh, get the weight off the tyres. Uh, this also allows me to continue on and putting other parts on like the, uh, the aerial behind the cockpit and uh, the propeller shaft itself. So the model, uh, the model itself comes with the option of actually making it a free spilling propeller but frankly, no one is going to actually come up to your model and start flicking the propeller, so I just glue it straight on with the orientation of one of the actual uh, blades, the propeller sitting straight up. So there you have it, pretty much the complete model. We just have to put the canopy on now. All right, just doing a quick test fit with the canopy to make sure it sits all nice and correct. Um, as mentioned before, when you're doing the actual uh, cockpit assembly, if you have the pilot sitting a little bit too high in the cockpit, the canopy actually won't sit flush with the model itself. In that case, you might have to actually sand back the head of the pilot just to get the uh, canopy to sit proper on the model. Um, in this case, right, so now I start gluing it on. 
Um, just to avoid any uh, fingerprints or marks in the actual model itself, I'm going to use uh, PVA glue. Um, that should hold the, uh, the canopy on nice and firm without leaving any um, fingerprint marks left up in the uh, canopy itself. Okay, and as with the most of this model, once the canopy's on, just uh, a bit of pressure and a bit of time, and eventually the glue will go off and the canopy will be on. Now the only other part to do after this is to actually um, add the antenna wire. Which in this case I used just a bit of uh, sewing, uh, sewing cotton, uh, glued it to the uh, actual antenna and the tail fin. Then once it was uh, firmly in place I actually put a bit of glue along the length of the cotton piece just to firm it up. Let that dry then just give it a touch of the, um, the grey paint just to give it that nice colour. And once that's done, that's pretty much it. That's the model complete. And there we have it. That's the Airfix Supermarine Spitfire Mark 1A, 172nd scale. So uh, hit like and subscribe, and um, therefore you'll be notified when the next uh, chapter comes out, which will be the Hawker Hurricane Mark 1. As I mentioned before, I'm doing a, a three-part model. This will consist of the Mark 1 Spitfire, uh, the Mark 1 Hurricane and the Lancaster Bomber which will all be mounted in the same uh, stands and same diorama so it should be a fairly impressive model. So I'll uh, see you in the next video.